Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge. An inside and outside look at all things NASA. It's really great to be back in the uh, insider chair, and it's really appropriate because we do have... You felt uncomfortable when, when I, Jeff well, and Pat were here. Actually, though, I tell you, I was uncomfortable because the information was flying so fast. You know, I'm trying to take notes and catch it's up. It's hard to take everything in. Fantastic. They, they did a great, they, they great did. job. But we're going to close out the show with a highlight piece of our activity yeah. out mm-hmm. in Flagstaff. And I, I think you're going to be I, impressed. I've been looking forward to this all show. I um, can't wait to see this. Yeah, I, there, there are a few surprises, but we basically went out and spent some time with the Desert Rats. You know what the uh, Desert Rats, what it stands for? No, what does what's Rats stand for? Okay, you're asking an insider now. <laughs> yeah, see, that's that's, so, that's what so, I'm so, talking so, about. So what's it stand for? It's Research and Technology Studies. The D is for desert, but Research and Technology Studies. And it really D wasn't okay. serious, like the desert environment that you would be, you think would be. It would be. It wasn't hot, and it was actually pretty cool and pleasant. Yes. Well, good. Yeah, well, so well, there you go. Well, I'm glad that you're learning. All right, well, let's take a look. Okay. Desert rats. Mm-hmm. Right here on NASA Edge. <laughs> We're here with Frank Delgado, the uh, project manager for the SCOUT program, which means... Science Crew Operations and Utility Testbed. It's basically a testbed that's allowing us to look at new technologies. Uh, the last rover that moved around on the surface of the moon uh, was over 30 years ago. We've had technology developed since then. We're taking a look at some of these advanced technologies and seeing how they can be applied to the development of our future rovers that will go to the moon and then eventually onto Mars. What are those new technologies? Uh, some of the new technologies are related to uh, intelligence systems, teleoperations, and also onboard driving. On the intelligence system side, uh, we're looking at how the vehicle can operate itself basically go from one location, carry out a set of actions, go somewhere else, do something else, come back and wait for further instructions. So it's got enough onboard intelligence to do things on its own. Now, is all that new technology, is that part of a special package you get? Are there any end-of-the-year uh, buyer incentives for picking up this rover? Any end-of-the-year buyer, buyer incentives? incentives? You know, yeah, like, you know, cash back. Uh... I got an 84 Corolla. Right. If I bring that in for this rover, what am I looking at in terms of monthly payments? Monthly payments? Uh... Hey, I'm here today with uh, Barbara Romick, test conductor here at the Desert Rats test area here in Arizona. Uh, Barbara, tell me, what is a desert rat number one? Um, Well, RAT stands for Research and Technology Studies. And so what we do is we take our spacesuits and robots and test them here in the um, relative environment that looks very lunar-like and try to drive out operational concepts for um, requirements for the moon. This week we've been testing our spacesuits with a a rover called Scout, and we've had humans driving the Scout vehicle on board. We've teleoperated the Scout vehicle, which means somebody's driven it from somewhere else, and it's been driven with programming, which we call autonomous. All right, Joe, this is seriously off the record, but I'm planning on doing some research of my own out here in the desert with a spacesuit. Do you have any advice, any tips you can give me for maybe a first-time researcher? Well, Blair, let me ask you. Do you have your own space suit? I found an old uh, space suit back at NASA Langley, and, and I brought it out to do some research of my own. Well, I'll tell you, son, you better get some boots. Do you have any idea what the space suit is needed for? Um, fashion, it's cool. Well, that's, Look that's a start, that's a start. Actually, the space suit does, it serves three purposes. Okay. It gives you a little environmental protection. Okay, which you, what you need. What you here. need, yes. right. It enables you to have mobility because this suit has to be pressurized so that you're at a, at least some sort of an Earth atmosphere-like situation so you can breathe and have ventilation. And I'm a flexible guy, so you I mean... You are, man. I've seen you run around and you, <laughs> Thanks. I'm glad I caught you. <laughs> Appreciate it. But that. anyway, uh, another aspect is the fact that you actually have to have the environmental protection because you're going to be walking on rough surfaces, you're going to be walking on hot surfaces, yes. and you're going to walk on cold surfaces. You have to have micrometeoroid protection. So all those things you need to really consider when you when you bring your spacesuit out here. Uh, well, I tell you what, if you, if you could just, I mean, promise me that if you see me wandering out there, that just don't leave me hanging. If you got a Saint Bernard with with that little jug of, of extra liquid, just send them right out. Okay, we will. Dude, you look great. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, the, I can't figure out the controls really, and it's it's a little difficult. But uh, there's one major obstacle, and that's uh, no boots. Bag on. Astronaut Hobbit out here, Space Hobbit. You need a little ingenuity and take care of that. Hey, I got you there, buddy. Oh, thanks, sir. Now, see, look at those. Pretty nice, huh? Pretty nice. 
See? That's, and it's all shiny like NASA. Hey, man. Check it out. You got some socks on under there? Um, no, but I don't, you know, I just needed boots. I didn't need like the whole accoutrement. Actually, I can see where that might be a problem. I'm gonna try a simulated ge geological uh, sample grab. Now, Cosmo talked about uh, mobility, so this is gonna be difficult. Uh, now a successful mobility test. Got a little pocket full of regolith, and uh, good to go. Cool. Okay, uh, Joe, as uh, for my uh, lessons learned part of my experiment, I was wondering if uh, you could help me out and, and, and give me some evaluation. Well, I, I certainly was impressed after our little tutorial there about what suits do, and, and you're fully in, you know, in, in, encumbered here in a spacesuit of some sort. Ensconced <laughs> is the proper word, probably. <laughs> I am really impressed with the duct tape boots. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're going to think about that one. As see. far as your performance, I was pretty impressed. You did oh, quite a you. good job. I uh, hope you collected some interesting samples. Pocket full of regolith. Pocket full of regolith. Then yep. next time I would suggest we have a helmet so you can really feel the end. Yes. But on a serious mode, uh, you know, you did so well, I'd like to promote you to a desert rat. And you are Thank now you, an sir. official desert rat. Oh, that is awesome. you got to get this on camera. Check it out. Desert rat. And, and likewise, if you'll reach right there, we're going to make you an honorary uh, NASA Edge member. Hey. So there you go. Boy, you talk about a trade. This is great. Thanks. Isn't that awesome? Appreciate it. And now, is it okay to, to, to sew these on to your suit? Is that you too dangerous? No. Okay. Well, okay, as good. long as you're not in it. Oh, good. <laughs> good point. And so we get uh, not only uh, spacesuit advice, we get sewing and embroidery advice from uh, Joe Cosmo on NASA Edge, an inside and outside look at all things NASA. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Brian. Enjoyed it. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. You guys have a you guys have a ball. <laughs>